Today we'll take a look at the Rescue Project, an open source search and rescue tool using off-the-shelf components at a budget price, Arduino code, 3D printing, and even RC FPV aircraft. The hardware is able to locate people via the signature from their cell phone. It'll store their location and hopefully guide search and rescue workers right to them when needed. All this and more are coming up on today's episode of Making Exposed. So what is the Rescue Project? Well, there's two components to it, at least that's the plan. One is a ground-based unit, ground-based Yagi antenna receiver, which when pointed out in the, into the bush or wherever, will detect the presence of a cell phone using the AP packet beacons coming from that phone. I did this because, well, pretty much every phone has Wi-Fi on board and it was the only wireless radio I could get. The ESP8266 radios, the microcontrollers, work fantastic for this and don't cost a lot of money. Whereas doing it on the cell frequencies would work better, but it would cost a lot. The other component is an air unit. And this was my original plan was to put it into as a payload in one of my quadcopters or aircraft drones. Using the, the aircraft as an autonomous waypoint mission, we can cover a lot of ground and do a full search grid and pick up uh, anything, any targets of interest on the ground and either broadcast them back via wireless or just record the data and get it later when the UAV lands. This project came about because I was inspired by the, the show Northwood's Law. I kind of liked that TV show. It's one of the few that I watched. And a common theme is people getting lost in the wilderness and, and these wonderful game wardens just busting their humps trying to find these people and bring them back to safety. But finding them was really difficult. A lot of cases, these people could actually intermittently get phone calls out and connect to the cell network, but they had no way of directing people to where they were. They couldn't tell the wardens where they were other than they were on X mountain peak at some point. My project I thought would be an easy way with simple off the shelf hardware to locate a cell phone regardless of where they were. The commercial ones are available, but most small game warden stations in my neck of the woods, the RCMP or OPP or whatever, our law enforcement or our search and rescue would not have the budget for such a thing. My unit, just a few bucks. So to test my idea, I did what I always do, whip things up on a breadboard. This is the OLED display, the Wemos D1 Mini, the little rubber duck antenna, and that's about it. Powering it with a 18650 battery power supply. And I went out to my uh, local field, <laughs> a deserted road just outside of town to get away from all the cell phone signals. And I set my cell phone up on a fence post to see how far I could go. I drove up the road, quite a little ways and tried to see when the signal would disappear. Now there's some latency in my code, the cache isn't updated all the time. So when I finally dropped out, I stopped the car, went outside to see if I could pick it up again. That's a fair distance. We'll see if we can pick it up again. Because it doesn't flush the cache very often. I forget how often I do that. We just went ahead and went to the Yagi style antenna. This is a pretty high gain directional antenna. Later I'd find out this particular antenna was actually not nearly as good as others I have. But I digress, you'll see that in an upcoming video. With the phone down range sitting on the fence post, I just aimed down the road and waited. Now that latency in the code took a few seconds, but sure enough, nada. Oh, got it. <laughs> Perfect. That is a long way. All right, let's go a little further. 
once I drove a little further down, sure enough, I was able to pick it up again. This is where I started running into troubles because people started showing up to walk on the walking trails and ended up picking up their MAC addresses too. So long story short, this proved what I wanted. I was able to determine that the ground base station was viable with this antenna. Um, it's not terribly far away, but sometimes the person or object you're looking for is pretty close after all. A lot of people that are lost are found within meters of where searchers were, were looking for them. So this might just do the trick. If you're a maker or electronics enthusiast, make sure you check out PCB Way. They can make any circuit board you desire, provide the parts, and even assemble the board for you. They now offer fully transparent tracking on your order so you can see where your project is at from start to finish. Next on the agenda, I decided, well, I need a case and need to get this ground base station a little bit more sorted so that I can actually handle it and maybe do a little bit more testing. So the 3D printer. case came out pretty good on the i3 Mega, no issues. This is just pretty rough. I just designed it quickly from a, uh, an open SCAD design on Thingiverse. Uh, all these files are linked in GitHub for anyone to recreate this, but this will do the job. We just need to assemble it. Since we don't yet have a custom PCB or anything, I'm just going to use the breadboard. They work just fine. So stuff the breadboard into the project box itself, route the antenna wire out through the side, and I think we should have something viable to work with here. The display is inside the box, which is slightly undesirable, but we can move that out at a later date. Conveniently, the Yegi antenna has a mounting bracket that I think we can just stick the project box right on the side. Later, we'll make a handle to hold this like a pistol grip style handle, I think, to make it a little easier to aim. But for prototyping and testing, this will work just fine. The power of having 3D printers or open designs is just crazy. It just makes, makes stuff like this so much easier. Now, because the design was actually an open SCAD design, I didn't go ahead and modify it for the proper bolt holes. So, ah, step drill bit will do the job here. There's no, no problem. We don't need to make everything in CAD. We can just drill them afterwards. No issues. And to keep things super simple, I just went ahead and removed the screws holding the Yagi to the bracket, use those to mount them right to the case. No problem. Attach our SMA connection to our antenna, and we're good to go. Projects like these I often break into stages. It makes it a bit more manageable for me and keeps my own interest. So in this case, I've been working on the ground unit and the air unit separately and back and forth between them, depending on whether I would, it was interested in writing code or whether I was interested in designing, say, the 3D printed enclosures for the hardware. I do this pretty often just, just to keep my own interest and keep a project moving. Uh, sometimes there's no rhyme to reason. Sometimes it's driven by the parts I have available and what I have to wait to come in because I often slow boat stuff from China from eBay just to keep the cost down on these projects. With the ground base unit working, we're able to detect stuff. Now we need a bit more information. I wanted to add GPS to our to our mix here. That way, wherever the Yagi was picking up a MAC address, um, a cell phone signature, we would record our current location. To do that, I just use the same GPS modules that I've used, the BN220s, and I use those on my uh, iNav aircraft. These are super reliable module. They acquire satellites quickly and accurately, and I've just never had any problems. They're also really small and light, so good on the aircraft. We only need serial data, so we're just going to need two serial lines and a power and a ground to the module. So we'll just do those on small little broken out header pins. That way we can just stuff them into the breadboard too and stick with our original kind of setup here. 
I think this will do the job for now. Maybe a little bit of hot glue across those connections just in case they get kind of bent or ding. That way they don't short together. That's the only way that you can pretty much kill these, uh, these modules is by shorting them out. But that's the overview of where we're at. We've got our SD card, our OLED, and our GPS module. Everything should work pretty good. At this stage, I'm just going to test the GPS. What I do with my code as usual is I break the code out and just did just the GPS code, just the GPS example to see whether it would work. And sure enough, I was able to get the ESP8266 to set itself up as a web page on my local network and display my current GPS location and the UTC time exactly what I needed. Now I know at this stage that we can go ahead and integrate it into the existing code. As long as we don't run into memory issues like I did when I put the OLED in, we should be good to go. This project is looking promising now. So one of the components with the air unit is the flying machine, the drone. Well, in this case, I'm using the Nano Talon, which is a wonderful foam aircraft that I've built up on this channel with live streams and a few different videos on it uh, with all open source software called iNav that runs it. It can do waypoint missions, it can do navigation, it can do flight stabilization and really works really well. Using a 900 megahertz radio link to my transmitter, I get bi-directional telemetry through that, which is the Team Black Sheep radio system, just absolutely wonderful. I also have the 433 megahertz telemetry coming down, which allows me to bi-directionally control the waypoint mission on the drone, which is pretty cool. Pretty handy in this case for wanting to send it out to a specific search area. I don't have to land or plug into USB or anything. I can just put the autopilot into a loiter mode, uh, send new commands to the aircraft and send it on its way again. Pretty cool. When I went to test these systems, I did so as a, as a fun day out at the field. I took my other plane, my mini AR wing, and my quadcopters each time so I could make a day of it because knowing full well that I was going to run into issues and this was going to take a while to get the, get the airframe working correctly along with the existing electrical hardware. The Nano Talon just works wonderful. What a great little aircraft. These things are a lot of wings, so you get a lot of lift. Easy to hand launch all by myself, no issues. Went ahead, launched it, flew it, repeated several times till we got things sorted. Notes to self, uh, in the middle mode, it uh, seems to fly fine for stabilization, but in the bottom mode, like cruise, it lowers the throttle to like nothing. So that's no good. It's not enough throttle to keep it up. So need to change that. In case it wasn't clear before, this plane is FPV, which is first person view. It has a camera in the front that downlinks via a one watt video transmitter down to my goggles. So this is what I see through the goggles from the aircraft. A lot of handy information on the display, which is being operated by a program called iNav, an open source uh, firmware for the flight controller. And all the information I need to pilot the plane, here it is. 
In the top left, you can see the estimated wind speed. Below that, throttle position. Below that, our current consumption, as well as our overall consumption in milliamp hours from the battery. I'm running a 3000 milliamp hour lithium ion handmade pack by me. Below that, we have our pitot tube airspeed. That's our true airspeed over the wings. Below that, we have GPS speed, which is our measured GPS ground speed. We also have our pack voltage per cell and our overall pack voltage, which is really handy. In the middle, we have our flight mode. In the top, we also have our distance to home position, which is where we armed. We have artificial horizon, keeping us level throughout. And on the right-hand side, we have altitude, uh, a variometer, which is our difference in altitude in meters per second, our total timer, our RSSI, our relative signal strength of our radio link, which is broken in this example, and our overall satellite that are captured by the GPS module. You can see the video video link is quite bad in this flight. This was one of the many issues I had to work with. The, the video transmitter was actually only producing 50 milliwatts in this case. So we end up with a very bad signal at times, depending on where we are relative to the field. But Overall, I'm pretty happy with how things are working. I have to tune this flight stabilization in our different modes and our trims, but that, that comes in time. With things looking promising with the aircraft, I decided to go back to building the payload for the plane again. That's our air unit. I used the same enclosure design in OpenSCAD and customized it to fit the smaller air unit that we're going to build a custom PCB in the future as well. Same procedure as before, customize it up, export it, print it. Enclosure came out fantastic in black PLA plastic on my i3 Mega. No issues again. We'll go ahead and test fit the ESP8266 in here and generally just see what we're up against. How small can we make this so that it'll be easy to carry in the payload on the Nano Talon? I find this is the easiest way for me to do things because I, I don't overlook as many issues such as the SMA connection from the antenna here. It's easy to forget that's going to take up some space in the enclosure. We're going to need to know that when we go to design the printed circuit board for this project. So I settled on putting the ESP8266 at the bottom and then we'll do a shield sort of thing over the top of it. And, and then we'll set our SD card on that and the GPS. I may try in the case here, but obviously it'll be much better remotely. That way I can route it to the top of the aircraft and it's possible I can even tee into the existing one on the aircraft as well. I haven't tried that yet. And we're left with what looks like a viable size. We can probably make it significantly smaller yet, but for now we'll start here. And back to the Nanotalon fuselage here. In the bottom is this nifty little compartment, which is completely empty except for the connections for our battery and the existing 433 megahertz telemetry antenna there. This being running on 2.4 gig shouldn't be a problem. It's best not to have them in proximity like this, so I'll probably run a remote antenna later. But for the purposes of testing here, I just wanna be able to stuff this in there, put this in the air and test it out because we have other considerations such as balance on the air craft, etc. All right, we're back again. Nanotalon working right this time. We have INAV script working. We've never had working on this since day one, so that should do. No map. Let me see if I can fix that. 
On this night, I had storm fronts brewing all around me, so it was a bit of a rush to get the aircraft in the air. But the goal for me this night was to test the GPS telemetry downlink to my laptop to make sure I could track the aircraft and send commands to the aircraft to do uh, grid search patterns, point of uh, point of interest missions, stuff like that. And sure enough, we had pretty good success. And not to mention, I just got to enjoy the clouds. This is a pretty cool night to be in the sky. And through the goggles, I was met with a pretty cool view. All my avionics is now working. All systems on board seem to be doing exactly as I needed. The tune is even really good here. I'm flying in complete manual mode, no stabilization, no autopilot. Testing return to home, testing loiter modes, and just generally having a blast. This, this thing is a fun bird to fly. The video quality is quite good, and I also have the ability to put a second camera, a downward facing camera that I can switch from the flight control, which will give me all the same avionics view here, except a downward facing. So if I see something on the ground of interest that I want to check out that isn't alerted from uh, the rescue electronics, I can still do a visual search. Pretty cool. And this is my laptop on the ground, sure enough, tracking the aircraft live via the 433 MHz radio downlink from the aircraft. I haven't done a range test with this system yet, that'll come in the future, so I can also go to a higher power or a different frequency telemetry system. I picked 433 for this because I figured that would give me the most punch for this low wattage. I think the TX is running about 70 milliwatts thereabouts, but I have no way to measure that. Overall, I couldn't be happier with this project. We're at the stage now where we have a functional airframe, a functional rescue electronic system, both ground and air based. In the next video, we'll go ahead and make a custom printed circuit board for this and a few other frills and nice to haves. You can track the entire progress on my GitHub or on the Hackaday uh, project page. All of my project logs are posted there as well, including this video. Can't wait to bring you along for more of this project and I'll see you guys on the project pages or join me in the Discord and you can chat live. Good luck in all your projects. Uh, I, I hope you had fun with this. I, I sure have. This has been this has been great. GoPro stop recording. This is only part one. Obviously the project isn't done, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview as to what I'm building here. And, uh, maybe uh, inspire you to join this project and expand it yourself and jump in on maybe you've got some ideas on the code or some hardware. Cheers guys.